G'day guys. Got a GPX 6000 here that uh, any movement on the front of the detector cable um, causes the detector to get very, very noisy and it's an intermittent fault. So this is going to be an absolute doozy to track down. I've had a go at a, a few bits and pieces. There's a lot of uh, componentry, the way it's uh, um, soldered onto the board, that if you if you actually magnify it, it, uh, it looks like uh, dry joints, but it's not. But then again, some of those ones that look like dry joints possibly might be. So this is a bit of a a uh, interesting one. Here we'll look here. This is uh, a lot of to do with the receiver here. And of course you've got the, the blessed um, module on the back. That module. And uh, yeah. So this is very, very, I will say, very difficult to repair. Uh, you you could um, give the whole thing a an infrared heat up and uh, see if it reflows. But normally, when you get a dry joint, if there is one there, it won't reflow. It'll just reflow away. It won't uh, usually stick down. So you have to magnify everything and try and find it by hand. So as you can see, uh, it could be a very time-consuming job. It might not even be in this area here. It uh, could be anywhere. It might be on the other side of the board. Uh, and pray to God it is not in that uh, um, locked up module, which uh, is just a big block of resin. Because if it's in there, you've got no hope in hell of doing much about it. So, yeah, so it's a bit of a steep uh, curve. What I did find, and I initially checked on, were the bigger components, um, larger components, like surface mount resistors here, inductors, anything with a bit of meat on it that uh, takes a while to heat up, that one there. Sometimes they are a culprit that they don't heat up enough or heat up quickly enough and uh, they can um, end up with a dry joint. Also the large size causes a lot of uh, um, thermally induced expansion and when it cools off it contracts and if the solder is a little bit iffy it can pull back and make a dry joint. So these things will probably, you know, there's probably many detectors out there working away out, out in the field that have dry joints and it just hasn't uh, um, become resistive enough or not connected to cause a problem. And, uh, you know, sometimes it'll go on forever like that and it'll continue working. And then other times it'll get, uh, you know, a bit of uh, oxidation will get in there, crawl around the solder, uh, basically turn it into some oxides and uh, stops working. So that could be another thing. That's why in a lot of cases hitting it with uh, a reflow doesn't cure it because you can't solder through any sort of uh, oxides or even sulfides. Anything like that will not take solder and you'll be uh, getting nowhere fast. And with heat, of course, there's always a chance of damaging the components. Like on this one, you, you wouldn't throw it through um, anything like uh, the heat treatment. It's too much plastic on it now, and uh, it would just cause massive issues. So the bigger components, always check them. Always check anything that's hand-soldered, such as where the wires go through and how they're connected. 
like I said, I found on some older detectors with the wires that were covered with heat shrink onto the coil plug pins that I just tugged on them and the wires fell off. Uh, it was just a pressure fit. <laughs> Grace of God with the, uh, um, yeah, the heat shrink holding the wire to the metal on the plug. And uh, normally you'll get uh, faults like that and people will say, oh, the detector goes noisy. And you will find uh, issues like that. But this one's totally different. It is something to do on the main PCB. I've checked the connector. There's nothing wrong with the connector. So uh, this is going to be a bit of an interesting one. But what do you do? Uh, you know, you you can't go and say, well, we'll go put another board on it. <laughs> It'll cost you a, a, a fortune. Um, go and ask, ask uh, for a spare board. They won't sell you one anyway, I don't think. Um, I sell them in pairs because uh, um, they are meant to be matched pairs of boards. Maybe they do an automatic software tune on them or something. Who knows? So what we're going to do now is uh, we've got to go and uh, poke and prod and magnify every component on there and then... Uh, well, within reason, I can't do everything. Some of the stuff, the legs are too small. And uh, uh, it just gets too difficult. It's all machine soldered. It's not hand soldered. And trying to hand solder stuff that's been done with machine uh, takes meticulous care. Or otherwise, if you leave solder dags on anything there, uh, you will stuff it, completely stuff it uh, in most cases. And uh, you don't want to do that. So we're going to try and uh, see if we can make it behave. So I can't really video in on this with uh, my fat fingers and uh, soldering iron and everything like that uh, doing this. So it's just going to be a bit of a, this is what we've got. And I'm going to see if I can fix it. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it uh, is really obvious um, what the problem is. It could, could be multiple uh, iffy connections. I, I, I once upon a time had a GP3000 that was intermittent. And it was very intermittent uh, as I was giving the board about one millimeter flex and I couldn't work out where it was so I was poking and prodding around and I found one IC uh, on the board um, 16 leg SOIC package and what I found is that when I flex the board so the detector stopped working I pushed on this IC and it started working again. And I scraped away the blessed white, um, nearly knocked the uh, tripod over, the blessed white paint. And I found one whole side of the IC was never soldered. Um, and at that point of time, I did, I rang up um, Mine Lab and I told them because they didn't want detectors going out with. Um, a, you know, it's a bodgy solder mask or something somewhere in the line, and uh, yeah, obviously they would have uh, looked at that and picked up on it. But this uh, detector, it uh, had none of the legs on one side uh, soldered down at all. They, you could just uh, lift them with a little blade. There's just nothing there. So anyway, um, hit each leg with a, a dab of uh, solder with the soldering iron, and uh, that uh, problem went away. So. Is it a similar sort of problem with this? I doubt it. This is just going to be something that's happened and uh, it's reared its ugly head. Um, with a lot of these uh, components too, this is one thing you've got to take note of when you buy componentry. And I've done this too with surface mount machines that uh, you'll set everything up properly 
and uh, you know you're loading your boards or the machines loading the boards you can do you know, many many uh, thousands of components uh, in an hour and uh, you haven't checked and your components uh, they have come through a if you don't buy them from a reliable source they can um, some sometimes there's things happen and uh, if they if a particular place can't get them they second source and some of these things could be a, be sitting around in a bad atmosphere somewhere and all the legs are oxidized and very slightly and what happens you stick them in the on the reels in the surface mount machine and uh, they all get glued on the board and they go through the oven and they don't solder <laughs> and you go what at the th it doesn't work what's going on and uh, yeah, you got to go in the, um, on the investigation, and then you'll, yep, have to remove every one of those ICs, either chemically treat it to get the oxid, uh, oxides off the legs, or you run, uh, you run it through the machine again just with that component and put on the uh, um, correct components with uh, non oxidized legs. So, yeah, been there, done that. Had all sorts of stuff happen over the years. Um, you know, the the best one of all was uh, um, some uh, capacitors, big capacitors, and uh, they're a special type of capacitor. And we got them in, and um, they they were basically uh, uh, metal pins just going into the body of the capacitor. There's no, there's nothing in the capacitor. <laughs> it's just an empty shell made to look like a capacitor. Uh, you watch out with stuff like that. Um, one time we bought a whole heap of uh, um, 350 volt uh, um, TO3 transistors. I think they they were probably two SD 350s for memory, and uh, we got them in. Um, you know, in lots of a uh, couple of hundred, and we started putting them in uh, a particular job. There was actually a battery backup system, power supplies, and they'd last they'd last for five minutes and blow up. <laughs> and uh, what we found is that uh, um, where we got them from had done something along the lines of let's rub off um, um, the numbers on top of the transistors, and we'll go and reprint them all. So they were two N three O five fives, which are rated for about hundred volts odd. And they went and put 2SD350 um, on top of all the transistors and sold them to us for a huge profit. So you got to watch out for these um, scammers out there. They do stuff like this. But uh, doesn't uh, fix this board, does it? Doesn't fix this board. So doesn't fail. It goes noisy. So I've already got some suspects in my mind about what it could possibly be um, and uh, I'll go on the uh, um, yeah inspection and uh, we'll give it some soldering across it and on the back of the on the other side of the board as well uh, the other board here that's just got uh, some A to D's on it and some uh, yeah, multiplexes and a processor of sorts and it's picked up some hot melt glue we can go away don't want that so yeah that's uh that and uh there's not much on the back of that anyway that's where the uh micro is there's a lot of little capacitors there for filtering lots of test points thing is the test points are under the board you need them connected together to uh, and then get on the test points so obviously these are tested by machine and obviously it goes down on another board somehow um, arranged and it's probably I used to make these up um, little pin testers where you get a a board and we'd set pins up so that they would align up with the test points and it would go onto an automated uh, testing arrangement and just cycle the boards and if anything was out of uh, Kilter, it would say what test point the failure was, and just a quick look at the schematic and look at the circuit. Usually, find out what part was uh, 
put in around the wrong way, um, wrong part, or not soldered properly. That's that's the failure mechanisms we used to have. So that's that on this. So I'll get into it very, very carefully, and I'll use my uh, my um, magnifier, which I got uh, on the internet. The zoom in magnifier will go over everything. Just see if we can see it. Normally, with dry joints uh, on surface mount components, they are near impossible to see. It's underneath the leg. That's just the way it works. So. And with this, you can't, um, well, the way I have it here, unless I made up some extension cables and had the whole thing on the bench, I can't really uh, do much. It, it, to do this properly, it'd uh, be a big setup and you'd want a few of them coming through the door with intermittent faults to make it worthwhile. So we'll pull it apart, pull it uh, what's already apart, and uh, we'll just go over it. We'll just check everything again. And you know, give it the wiggle the, and the test and uh, see how we go. Anyway, these things are, uh, yeah, they're not, um, you know, last forever devices. <laughs> things happen. They do happen. Even just hot, cold, hot, cold on the circuit boards uh, will cause thermal flexing. And you can get dry joints that way as well. Uh, there's a lot of things that can happen. So if I was you guys, I'd, I'd be putting my uh, circuit boards in a insulated, or not circuit boards, but the detectors themselves, the um, head units and the body in an esky. If I'm uh, having them sit in the car or anything like that where it's going to heat up, um, you know, get to 100 plus degrees in the car, and uh, these things will be copying it. So put, them, put the... Um, the uh, units disconnect them, put them in an esky, so you've got some sort of protection that uh, they're not going to, you know, heat up at a, and uh, cool down at a great rate of knots because uh, that thermal um, heating and cooling effect uh, can cause dry joints. Uh, it can also affect bonding inside the devices too, but I won't go into that too much. It gets um, quite interesting. Especially um, things full of, you know, everything sealed in resin. Like I've mentioned in another video where we had a company filling everything up, all their uh, electronics in resin blocks and uh, just thermal cycling um, and the shrink, just normal natural shrinkage of the uh, plastic over time um, basically pulled the component legs off the board, um, even by microns, but it was a failure mechanism. Because uh, we had to go and chip the uh, the resin out, and uh, yeah, guarantee it, it was full of dry joints. So you just have to go and solder it all up. The way it would work again. So that's why I do, I personally, and in my opinion, I hate modules, especially when they're full of uh, um, plastics and that. I I just don't like it. Um, and also. Uh, you know, you could go on. You could look at all the um, possibilities. You know, uh, you know, cooling for a start, um, air convection. Suddenly, you got no air convection. Um, it's got a big black module. But that's my take on it. Uh, anything I well, I, I actually have. I built stuff up in the past and I <laughs> put them in resin. So I didn't want anyone seeing what was in there. But uh, I'm sort of. It's a double-edged sword, you know. You, you keep prying eyes out, but also you can cause yourself a massive um, overload in your service department. So it just depends how it all rolls, doesn't it? I'm not saying this this is um, going to happen. It's a possibility, just that I've seen it in other equipment that uh, have uh, things sealed up and, uh, yeah, you have to break them open and uh, try and repair it. But... Uh, I think on these, um, I don't know if that would be an option. Be uh, very, very difficult. Anyway, enough waffle on the six thousand. Uh, I've got lots of uh, detectors to continue repairing. David's bringing around more, so we'll see how we go. And uh, I'll make a video if I've uh, got this thing cured. Catches. <laughs>